Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Daton Roma F35, a very powerful but yet relatively small sized 3.5 inch mini quadcopter. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to convert it from EMU flight to beta flight and share with you the current recommended settings, give you my feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. First of all, the Roma F35 is available in a couple of versions. You can get an analog version, a digital version, which is bundled with the Cadix Nebula Polar digital transmission system, and the power kit, which is the version that I've got, that will require you to install your own VTX and FPV camera. All the versions are available either in 4S or 6S variants, which differ in the KV rating of the Mamba 22 or 3.5 motors, and you can get either a Bind and Fly version, which is available with multiple radio receiver options, or a plug and play version that will require you to install your own radio receiver. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you're getting a single set of Gemfan Hurricane 3520 tri bladed propellers, so getting spur propellers is a must. Two 20 cm long, high quality, Dayton branded battery Velcro straps. A pretty long USB to USB Type-C cable, which is always useful. Plenty of spare screws, which are well organized and labeled. A couple of zip ties. A bag that contains a keychain holder, the wiring diagram of the stack, and a single use coupon code, which if you are quick enough, you can try to redeem at Dayton's website. A mislabeled frequency table. A 20 by 20 millimeters plastic board, which if you'd like to, you can use for mounting the radio receiver on top of the stack. Two battery pads. 3D printed TPU parts that are going to enable you to mount a micro-sized FPV camera. Plastic tubes for protecting the antennas of the radio receiver. A JST connector that was actually pre-soldered to the flight controller. And harnesses that are going to enable you to quickly connect a radio receiver with minimal soldering work. In terms of features and specs, the Roma F35 features the Mamba Toka 22-3.5 motors. These motors are a little bit oversized for this 3.5 inch build, as they are normally used on larger setups, however this is actually the highlight of this quadcopter, as they are going to provide you with plenty of power, especially in the lower end of throttle, and still remain relatively efficient. On the center of the quadcopter, protected by these detachable plastic parts, you can find a 20 by 20 mm stack, which is based on a 40 ampere BLLS 4-in-1 ESC and an F7 flight controller. A buzzer is connected to the flight controller and secured to the bottom plate using a double-sided tape. The VTX is mounted on the back of the frame using 20 by 20 mm M2 mounting holes. On the back of the frame, you can find a 3D printed TPU part that holds an immortal T antenna, antenna tubes for the radio receiver, an XT60 battery connector, and an SMA antenna connector, which just like this LHCP antenna, is included in the power kit. The battery is going to be mounted on the top plate, and on the front of the quadcopter, well protected by these two aluminum parts, you can find a micro-sized FPV camera. As for the frame, its wheelbase is 158mm and it features a wide X pattern. The thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 3mm. The width of each arm is 10mm. The thickness of the top plate is 2mm. The distance between the bottom and top plates is 25mm. On the center of the frame, you can find both 20x20 20 20 M2 and 30.5x30.5 M3 mounting holes. Without a battery, the F35 weighs 243.5 grams, and including a 4S 850 mAh LiPo battery, the total weight is about 354 grams. As for setting it up, in case you have the power kit version, you'll need to install your own video transmitter and FPV camera. Connecting the Vista unit to the flight controller is done either using the dedicated GST connector on the flight controller, although a cable is not included, or you can solder it directly to the pads next to it, like I did, and keep in mind that unfortunately the M2 screws for securing the Vista unit on the back of the quadcopter are not included, so you'll need to obtain them separately. In addition, out of the box, the flight controller of the F35 came pre-flashed with EMI Flight. This is Dayton's first attempt of releasing a quadcopter with EMI Flight, and I think that they are lacking some experience using it, 
as I've encountered a weird issue where when the throttle was lowered down it was suddenly raised, which almost got this quadcopter stuck in a tree, so I recommend to either adjust these settings if you have previous experience with IMI flight, or just change the framer to beta flight as I'm about to show you and use the recommended settings which were supplied to me by Dayton. In case you choose to make the conversion to beta flight, you will need to manually enter DFU mode by pressing this button while connecting the flight controller to your computer and then flash it with the Mamba F722 I2C firmware. The recommended settings by Dayton for both 4S and 6S versions are included down below and I also recommend to flash the BLLES ESCs with Jazz Maverick firmware, apply the following settings and enable the bidirectional D-shot switch on Betaflight. After testing the F-35 with Betaflight, I can tell you that I didn't experience the issues that I had with Imiflight, however the tune was still a little bit off, so keep in mind that in case you are going to get this quadcopter, you might need to tune it yourself, or wait for that one to release an updated tune. So overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that the Dayton F-35 is probably the most powerful 3.5-inch quadcopter that you can currently get. Even though it's not as powerful as a 5-inch setup, it is quieter, features a smaller form factor, and still will be able to carry even a full-sized GoPro camera, and on top of that, I really like its build quality and the attention to details which includes the stack and motor wires protectors. In terms of flight time, you can expect between 3 to 4 minutes of an aggressive flight using an 850mAh 4S LiPo battery, and in case you just want to cruise around, you can even use the F-35 with the 4S 18650 lithium-ion battery cell, which should provide you with more than 15 minutes of flight time. Now you should keep in mind that because the XT60 battery connector is secured to the back of the frame using a 3D printed TPU part, not all the batteries are going to be compatible with this frame, which by the way requires you to mount the battery on the center of the battery pad, as otherwise you are going to experience some bounce backs. So you'll need to either get batteries with pretty long battery leads, or you can use an XT60 battery adapter, which is similar to this one. In my opinion, the F35 could have been easily the best in its category if it featured a better tune, but unfortunately it doesn't, and it could have been even nicer if it also came with an action camera mount. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, so I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.